Right, hello again. Um, now we're going to get into kind of the more complicated stuff. Um, so let's just jump in. First thing we're going to do is we're going to make a box. And this is where, you know, we've done this, this is fine. Make sure you get F4 press so you can see the edges. Everyone's happy. Edge faces. Great. Oh, what? Actually, I actually haven't shown you that. At the moment, this is realistic here, doesn't it? And with edge faces because I pressed F4. I can actually change it to different as a shaded. And what that will do is give it a constant color instead of having this realistic face, which, yeah, you can see the shading coming in there. Shaded is actually a little bit easier to see things. Um, you've also got constant colors, which flattens everything off. And you've got wireframe, so you can just see it in wireframe, useful for seeing through an object. Um, you've got some kind of more stylized ones. You've got clay, makes it look quite nice. Don't be fooled though, your object will not look like that at the end, it's just an effect over the top. You've got some crazy stylized stuff, so you can make a graphic look. These are good, again, good for portfolios, good for images, um, but we'll just do shaded for now, that's fine. Um, so yeah, mess about with that. Um, what I was going to show you though is, here's my object, and we're going to modify we're doing some bending and things like that with it, we can resize it, it's fantastic. So I might make it a little bit nicer with the numbers. 40, 60, 20, there you go, my little odd thing to have round numbers, but there you go. Um, and yes, I can cut it, I can have lengths and widths and all that kind of fun stuff, but what I want to show you is that one of the most more important things is, is that where's a modifier known as Edit Poly. And this is the most powerful part of the whole program. Um, what you've got here, you might notice everything's changed. That's why I like to drag this out to have the two so you can see everything here. Um, we've got these things here, this selection, so for here it says the word vertex, and a vertex, if I click that, you should be able to see, is a point where two or more lines meet, okay, and they intersect, they make a vertex, and these can be moved, so I can take this point and move it over here, and I'm changing my shape, I can bring that back, control Z undo, I can drag around that, drag around that, so I've got both selected, move it in, okay, Hopefully you can see how powerful that is. Um, very useful for making objects. Uh, you can control click them. And bring that in as well there. So that's kind of, you know, my box is taking shape. Um, what you want to be careful of is if you drag around, be careful that you don't select more than what you need. I only want those top two and I've, I've selected the bottom one here as well. So if I hold alt and then drag around, it actually goes away. Okay. So control, drag around, or just drag around, and alt to get rid of, okay? Use, very important to do, because what you can do, especially if you're looking from like an angle like this, or drag around them, I've actually selected those as well, okay? Um, you can, option here, as it says, here it says ignore back facing. So I click that, and now drag around, it would not have selected the back, okay? So drag around there, those two are not selected. Okay, but ignore back facing on and off. Up to you. Always, even with that on, I tend to then go have a look because what can generally happen is you might be doing loads of modeling, you know, you get really far, really far, and then you turn the object around and you realize, yep, done it here. I've been pulling and pushing away all these different parts on the back and the whole thing is ruined. So do check everything, okay? This is one of those things. It's like if you ever used Photoshop before and you're tracing something and then you realize you've just drawn over the original, you've just wasted an hour's work. So double check that. Um, these are the verts, cool. Next one, edge. And the edges are these things here, the lines, okay? The big lines here. And they, again, can be moved, dragged around. So you make a much larger you know, edits to the objects. You can pull them up, bring it in, you know, make, different looking shapes. Um, again, rotate, they can be rotated. So if you want to do that as well, they can rotate different axes. And again, scale will do its thing as well. Bring that in. Do to pinch that into a point. All right. So edges, really useful. Uh, you've also got borders, which we'll talk about in a second. You can't do anything with it at the moment. Uh, you've also got polygons, and polygons are the faces. All right. And these are the big changes, so I might want to grab that, pull that out, you know, make my thing longer, uh, bring this over here, bring this over here. Yeah, big changes going on with that. And then the last one is element, and that's the whole thing. So I click that, I click the whole object. And that's really useful if you just want to select something quickly and you're in this mode, just like just come here, bring it over here, just grab the next one, go on. 
Um, yes, ah, that is actually a thing. Common thing that people tend to do. Say you had two objects, and you're in modifier here, and you had this thing here. You go for it, and you try and select that one. You're like, I can't. What's, what's going on? I can't. I can't select it. Oh no, I broke it. What, what do I do? So what do you need to do is go back to the create tab and select your object. That's it, because you were in the modifier of that object. It kind of locks itself down to that. All right. So when you've got that selected, I can't do anything with that. So just be wary. If you are thinking, oh, God, I can't select anything, take a step back, go back to create, click, delete, whatever. Right, cool. So my box looks all right. It's not that detailed, but let's have a look. Let's go back to the modifier. Uh, what I'm going to do is, let's try, let's go with edges. Now I'm going to select this edge here, this nice little bit down here. And I'm going to use, so we see here, actually, instead of using some of the modifiers, these have their own sort of edit edges. Um, yeah, let's start with edge. I like edge. All right, select that one. And I'm going to do something called chamfering. Okay. Um, what I would always recommend 100% of the time, you see this little box here, it says settings next to the word chamfer, uh, and with all of them. Click the settings, because that will bring up this little gizmo, and you can start to edit here and I can cut this object a little bit and I can bring that in so what I'm literally doing is adding more edges you probably see something appearing here there's a nice curve I'm chamfering it in and there you go and I can change how much how far I want that to go that looks quite nice now I can bring it down a bit uh, cut it up again you can go crazy with cutting but please don't just eyeball it and go yeah that's probably fine I don't want to put lots of detail in and um, there's chamfer types this is the old style old style uh, and you've got quad chamfer and this is more newer and, and better on actual there we go what that allows it to do it, it just it allows the software to create a better object quad chamfer is best so you click that and you get a better object out of it with actually using less faces so see there's five of that using triangles using quads you get a much nicer curve so try switch to that one again uh, whilst I'm in this I might think oh I quite like that maybe I'll do that to the back over here if I control click that line it actually applies it to that as well uh, maybe to that one and then whoops okay maybe I didn't want to do that the problem is there my curve has gone through the object like I said before don't want it to cross the stream so we can undo control Z and leave that be so I might say okay yeah I like those both being at the same angle tick and that's fine. Looking good. Uh, if I grab this one and chamfer it again, it's going to remember the settings of the last time. So you don't want that. You want to now modify it. So you might want it to be a lot lower there. And it's because it's just a little curve on the top. I probably don't need so many cuts. Maybe two is fine. And I can collect the back as well. There we go. And then we'll OK that. How does that look? Looks like a nice shape. Remember this started off as a box. Looking a lot much curvier and much nicer now. Um, what else can we do with this? Let's think of a useful one. Um, yeah, let's. So this is again. This is probably one of the most important uh, things you're going to do uh, because what you've got here is a big old space in the middle. If I go to my polygon tool again, I've got this big space here. That's great, but I might want it to have a cut here, a cut here, and a cut here, and I might want to bring this bit out, and this bit out, and keep this bit down. But the problem is, I don't have the faces. I haven't got information for me to drag. I can drag these bits, I can do what I want with them, but this, I, I, it's not cut up for me. So what do I do? I can select Edge, and I'm going to collect that one, and I'm going to control click that one. So I've got two parallel opposite lines. And I'm going to click the word connect, but remember the settings. And what happens is it's, it's now put a split line in, because I've told it to do it once, twice, three times, however many you want, how many cuts you want. Don't go nuts. I'll probably say just two is fine. And you can see, I would if I let go now, I'll have this in one, two, three pieces. I can also pinch it that way or that way. So it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, like equal size everywhere. And I can also slide it along however much I want. I might do that and then say OK. Brilliant. So now what I can show you, when I go back to my selection, look at this. I've got three shapes there now. That's awesome. Because, OK, I'll show you now. Um, what I'll do, so next tool I'm going to use is Polygon. And Polygon, if I control click, say, these two faces, 
Uh, I'll do one there. there. Actually, I can do extruding. And extruding is really powerful because I'll click on this on the settings as always and bring it up. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? And if I think, okay, yeah, uh, if I control click whilst this gig gizmo is open, boom, I've got them both. That's quite cool. I like that. Uh, I might bring them down slightly because it looks a little silly. I'm not sure what I'm making, but hey, I'm just showing you objects. That's fine. I can also, yeah, that's actually quite a nice thing to show. Um, while I'm doing this, if I, instead of pressing tick to sort of just apply it, I can say plus, apply and continue. So I can apply and continue it. See what I mean? So it's made the same thing again. And that's actually really useful because what I've gotten and done now is made two potential things which need to be sort of bridged or put across. Um, and what you might be thinking is, oh yeah, right, hold on, you can, you can just extrude them and try and get them to go. That's nice, it's not a bad idea, but it doesn't kind of stick them together and we want to be stuck, don't we? So what we use for that, when we have two perfectly opposite faces, which well, doesn't have to be perfect, uh, two faces we want to be bridged, we use the command bridge. Simple. Uh, and that can also be cut up, so we might want to do that. And then I can grab this face and I can extrude it. I might change the value. And my box, my simple humble box has turned into some kind of weird robot foot or like the base of an at or something. Who knows? Let's keep going. Uh, it's getting a bit crazy. Um, but yes, I've got a cool hole here, mental. And we can go to like these things here. I can control click and I can chamfer them. And yes, don't worry about all these other red lines. They're just showing where the chamfer has been before. Just adding in that detail, yeah. I tend to do this at the end because uh, once you the problem is this is all quite destructive now uh, I'm showing you now just for demonstration purpose but when making quite a detailed object you're better off doing the outline first if anyone is does drawing um, likes to draw characters or scenes and things like that the first thing you do is get the outline you don't jump in straight with the detail because that's crazy because you're always going to make a mistake um, but I'm just showing you like the detail you can get uh, let's chamfer that slightly a bit more. Cool. Yeah, my object is getting there. Some type of machine part. Um, one thing I want to show, let's have a think. So let's go back to Polygon. Again, you're going to be jumping between the tools. Um, yeah, let's go with this. So Extrude is a good one. We've also got Bevel. Bevel's quite powerful as well. If we click on that, it does. it's got two. It's got a height and an outline. If I drag that up, that's my height. You're thinking, well, what's different? That's just the same as Extrude. Well, you can also bring you can pinch the face in and out so I can do that and again if I select this one select bevel it will remember the settings so I've got a nice symmetrical object going on there looking cool um what else can I show you let's see this and this I'm going to select two opposite faces so control click them both and I'm going to use the modifier of inset and what that's going to do is kind of pinch the face in a bit so I've inset on both sides now I'm going to say OK to that, and now I'm going to delete. I press delete on my keyboard, and I made a big old hole where that face was. Um, what that's gone and left me with, though, is quite a problem, because if this this object, you can see there, has got a big old hole in it. Obviously, it's got a hole that way, but it's got a hole this way as well, and that's not great. So uh, there was a tool I told you about before, which doesn't, which didn't work, and only works in certain circumstances, and that's the border. And the border only comes alive when you delete something. So if I control click both of these borders, and if you've got a border of two countries and you want to put them together, what do you do? You bridge them. Um, where's that gone? There it is down here. Bridge, and there we go. Because it's remembered the settings of my last one, it's actually put in two there. So I'm going to bring that back and bring that back down to one. There we go. Oops. Click, click, there we are, and then tick. And now it's a solid object again but it's got a nice hole in it. I think that looks quite cool. Um, anything else, what can I show you? So yeah, same with the verts. Again, you, this is actually a lot more apparent now. Uh, when I show, when you click on the vertices, you can see all these blue things. They are how many points it's got. So if I press seven on my keyboard, I've got 188 polys, that's how many faces, and 236 verts. That's very low poly. There's not a lot going on here. Um, but that's fine, you know, you could have tens of thousands, 20,000, if you're talking movie quality uh, things, you're talking millions of polys and verts, so we're doing fine. Um, what else is there? Yeah, that's fine. I think what I'm going to get you to do is to mess about with some of this for now. Um, give us a shout if there's anything you need help on, and we'll see if we can make something. All right.